Welcome everyone to the Pantheon. I'm your host, Ray, and today uh, we're looking at Happy Death Day to you. It's part of our Groundhog's Day special as we count down the days, literally or hours, till Groundhog's Day. Uh, this one is directed by Christopher Landon of the film. Uh, he's directed many films now in the horror genre, like three or four of the Paranormal Activity films, uh, Freaky, uh, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, and of course, the first Happy Death Day. And uh, rumor has it that he may be doing a freaky Happy Death Day like crossover. Um, Jason Bloom has denied the reports, but is always hoping out that with do a trilogy, uh, they might incorporate that somehow. Or if they just do a trilogy, period, I look forward to, to the trilogy. So Tree is back, uh, going through a time loop. This time it doesn't. It takes place the next day as soon as she breaks out of the time loop and, and it resolves the mystery of the first film. Uh, we're into the next film, and this time it is uh, Ryan, uh, the best friend of uh, Carter, who walks in. He's stuck in the time loop, and uh, he gets killed over and over again until uh, Tree and the gang, or the Scooby gang, try to figure out how to solve it and help Ryan out. Now, the film becomes a horror film, but at this one, the horror element is now kind of gone. I mean, the horror element was really in the first film. It is now because it's sort of like a live, die, repeat, Groundhog's Day film. This film now becomes straight up a uh, sci-fi thriller it, and slash comedy. Uh, but it leans more into the science fiction and into the comedy uh, and, and it's a thriller. Uh, it's, it's still a murder mystery of trying to figure out who this baby face killer is. Uh, all the characters are not the same as the first one. What's interesting how they did this, they, they incorporate, spoiler, a multiverse type uh, scenario. So people are the same people are the same people but their motivations their stories their backstories may are, are slightly different so allows to have it allows the film to take a different narrative approach to the movie making of this uh, so who the killer was in the first film isn't the killer in this film and when the killer's revealed um, who's trying to kill Ryan that's a surprise and then from there uh, it goes into it's not when you realize who the killer is uh, off the top. Um, the film keeps going because it it does something to increase the rabbit hole which you go into. When it demonstrates that, what happens is, is that the narrative of it kind of you can either like still be on board with it, but if you're thinking too hard, you can say, well, this this is going to go off the rails, and it kind of does because uh, it doesn't explain. It explains Tree's uh, perspective, and if you follow the, yeah, the theory of the multiverse, you splinter off. You really can't go back to the original setting. Um, you, can, you, can, you just go forward, at least a slight variation, if you can do that. Um, and they kind of do that. Uh, what I like about the movie is that um, it's fun, uh, it's action-packed, you're still trying to guess who the killer is, um, and Tree and even each death is kind of creative, and uh, you really root for these guys. It's like you have a Scooby gang who's working together to try and figure it out. Um, the difference between the first and the second one, and I think the second one is better, is because Justice Jessica Roth, who is the MVP of this film, she has a lot of heart. There's a section of this film where you you really get emotionally attached to the situation that she's going through and second chances and some of the themes of this and it's a bit and with her parents and and how um this world is different and the you really i really connected to that part really well i think the science fiction element um because if, if they can wrap this up properly there is a there is issue with the, why the other characters are not involved uh, or what happened to the characters if the the multiverse scenario exists did they all come back to at that same point or at or at a later point or or because if one gets knocked out shouldn't they all get knocked out of this time loop and into the multi shouldn't shouldn't all the characters go into it, their own set of multiverses and so what you're seeing is a multiverse of tree returning back at that pivotal point but because the energy wavelength affected everybody, everyone should be going into the multiverse or their own, like basically it's like sliders or, um, uh, yeah, it's like sliders or like, or, or, or inception, but like 
everyone's going through their own inception. And, and so therefore there's flaws in the, in the actual like storytelling. I'm going too deep. So in summary, the film is worth watching. Uh, it's not as good as the first one. It, it more leans into the science fiction and less of the horror film and more of a metaverse kind of like mentality. But uh, because it, it leans into that and it the story is sort of compelling because of the emotional journey of Jessica Roth's character, Tree Gelman, I like it. Ryan gets more of a role. Uh, we get some new characters, a new Scooby gang with uh, Ryan and his friends mixing with Carter and Tree and with, um, you know, uh, uh, Hillary and Lacey and all the other, and, the, and all the characters from them, from the original movie coming back to do this. So, uh, and, and, and of course, when, because you do like a Groundhog's Day scenario, every day, everyone's doing, everyone's repeating the exact same thing. And you're, and you're seeing how that affects the, the main core characters in this. So I, I really found that to be impressive. Um, and very reminiscent to the Groundhog's Day experience. Um, so uh, it's worth a watch. Uh, and it's not that, it's worth a watch. I, in many regards, it's much more fun than the original, but there is flaws in the logistics of it. And if you can get past that, then the movie's awesome. The movie's really, really good. So with that, I'm Ray. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.